Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door. And I really am at my door tonight. And this is my first nighttime episode of Nature at Your Door. And the purpose of today's episode is to show you these amazing toads that I have around my house. I call them deck toads because they'll sometimes actually hop up three sets of stairs and walk out and hunt on my deck that's about 10 feet wide and about 10 feet off the ground. So today's episode is about the American toad, how to find them, how to identify them, and I'm going to conclude with some different things that you can do to enhance the habitat for these really cool creatures that consume lots and lots of insects. So stay tuned. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're going to find. And here's to make this invasive. There's a top. Dogwoods are flower. And I just took a couple swipes. Terrestrial environment. Uh, produce seed pollen. And it's. So I live in southwest Virginia. It's about 2,700 feet in elevation. It's probably about 65 degrees here. And I found that if I go out with a flashlight at night at this time of the year, I can almost always find a eastern toad. The scientific name of this particular toad is Anaxyrus americanus. And the word Anaxyrus means chief. And looking at these guys, they really do look like the chief, don't they? So here's my back deck. And this is usually a pretty good place to find American toads. And we can go over here. And sure enough, over here, there's an American toad. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? And they, why do they come out here? Well, they come out here because there's lights on in the house. And those lights attract lots of flying insects at night. So the toads come to feast on all these insects that are attracted here. And they're pretty gregarious and they seem to be able to coexist very well with humans. And sometimes I'll find four or five different toads on a given night. And here is one now. This guy is just in between our bird bath and a potted plant. Let's go around here, take a closer look at him. This is one of the bigger ones. Um, and the females are larger than the males, this one is very likely to be a female. Another place I often find these guys is out here on the carport. And of course, up here on the steps of my deck. I'm always surprised when they come up such a man-made structure to come here looking for food that's attracted to the lights of this house. I've had toads hop up through these three steps and come out and hang out on this deck right here. So the American toad can be found across a wide, wide swath of the United States, except in the very, very south of the country. And the American toad overlaps a lot with another toad called Fowler's toad. I don't have Fowler's toad here tonight, but I do have American toads, and I'll show you how to positively identify the American toad. There's a number of different things you can look for. And one of them is that wherever you have a dark spot on the toad, you'll only see one or two warts inside of that dark spot. Fowler's toad will have three or four warts in each dark spot. The American toad also has dark spots on its uh, chest or underside of its abdomen. 
while the Fowler's toad will have an almost snow white, very clean white chest. Another thing to look for in the American toad is to look back at the tibia or the calf of the toad's rear legs and you can see these enlarged warts that are almost shaped like a spine, have almost a pointy look to them. They're like spiny warts on the tibia. The Fowler's toad doesn't have that. And the last thing to look for are these post-orbital ridges on the top of his head. The ridges never touch the parathyroid gland, which are these large glands on the back of both toads and these are the ones that secrete a large volume of milky white substance and herpetologists can actually squeeze that out i don't do that to any of my toads but this is what's released if a predator picks them up and it causes a burning sensation and if you're handling a toad and touch your mouth or your eyes afterwards you can get that burning sensation too so the toads themselves to pick up are not poisonous, but you should always wash your hands as a precaution after. So these orbital ridges never touch the parathyroid glands in the American toad. They might have a little spur that touches, but otherwise they're untouched. And in Fowler's toad, the post-orbital ridges are in contact with the parathyroid glands. These toads have been doing pretty well without any intervention on my part. But we've been doing a few things here at my house to enhance their habitat. And this is just a clay pot that I cut a uh, wedge in, about three inches high, about four inches wide. If you've seen, a lot of those toads are pretty big. And I did it by taking some clay pots and using a hacksaw like this. And this has a special blade on it. It's a carbide tip ceramic concrete pottery blade you can get at your local hardware store. Um, a regular hacksaw blade won't do it. You'll need to get one of these um, to cut it. And it's pretty easy. And you can create a lot of little toad habitats, places for them to hide during the day. You want to play, put them in uh, moist places for them to use. We also try to keep some low trays of water out and so we keep this filled with water and it helps the plant as well but it gives them an opportunity you know we've had about two weeks without rain and I know these toads have come up and really appreciated to have that extra moisture. I found some nice pieces of bark that create a nice little habitat for them here. Always want to put them in shady, moist places. I looked online for toad houses, and some of them run for $30, $40, $45 a piece. And you can be really creative, though, and make your own at home. A pot like this, half buried, makes an instant toad house or toad home a hiding place. Remember putting them in very moist places. And you could Take a bowl like this or a pot and cut it in half with your carbide saw and have two, two houses to put out. You can take a broken clay pot or just a regular old clay pot and use that for a toad habitat. So what do the toads need? They need moist places. They need uh, places to hide. And they need bugs to eat. And these toads here are thriving on the bugs that are attracted to the light around our homes. And they seem to be able to coexist very well with the presence of, of humans. But what do these toads eat? They'll eat just about anything that moves that they can swallow. And so these toads are really thriving and getting really fat here, as you can see this one right here. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching this nighttime episode of Nature at Your Door. I've done a detailed episode on the life of the American toad and all the information you need to know about them. Check that out sometime if you get a chance. Remember, if you like what I do, I hope you're subscribed to my channel. 
and leave me a comment or a question, and I'll get back with you to answer as soon as I can if I'm not out hiking or exploring in the woods. Thanks for watching Nature at Your Door.